Hey, I'm Alec, and on today's quick tip, we'll talk about filament scraps. I've given you tips before on how do you know how much material you have left on a spool, but what are you supposed to do when that leftover bit just isn't enough for a complete print? In this quick tip, I have some techniques and uses of what to do with that scrap of filament that's just a little too much to throw away, but not enough to do anything useful with. Let's jump into it. After you've spent some time checking if the filament you have is enough to print anything small and finding that it's just not enough, start printing swatches. I've done that by just creating a small block, put a hole in it and just have it on a loop so that I can check through and see maybe this is the color I want for my next project. That way I have this I can walk around with instead of walking around with a huge print in this color and try and cross compare. A supplementary spreadsheet listing out all the important details like price, manufacturer, mass, dollar per kilogram, a link to where to buy it, or even any sort of print setting of note that makes it easy to come back to this material later if I do need more. A 3D printing pen like the 3 Doodler is a great way to utilize that last bit of filament too. You don't need a lot to be able to create things with it, so a little goes a long way. Or if you don't have the intent to create anything with the pen, you can at least use it to create some fairly solid weld between two different printed parts. If you don't already have a 3D printing pen, then what better filler to use for your printed parts than the filament it's made from? With the soldering iron in one hand and the filament guided by the other, you can use filament to help blend the edges between two separate 3D prints and be able to sand it down for a virtually invisible seam. For those that commonly split up large models into smaller sections, using alignment pins is invaluable to make sure that your edges blend well and you don't have any sort of skewed seam. While most alignment pins are going to be either metal or wooden dowels, you can still use filament to get the job done pretty cheaply. 1.75mm does the job okay, but 2.85 tends to do it a lot better just because of how much stiffer it is. With either of these though, you'll need to experiment with tolerances to make sure the holes are large enough to accommodate the filament, but still be tight enough to keep everything lining up properly. Similar to alignment pins, I've also used filament as a pin for a hinge. Unlike alignment pins though, there's a lot more margin for error, since all it needs to do is slide through two parts, and if it wants to slide out, just glue it in place in one of the hinges. The key with this is to have only one part with tight tolerances, that way it's really easy to slide the filament through one part and into the other without having to struggle to keep it all lined up. Just because you don't have enough filament to finish a print doesn't mean you don't have enough to start a print. You can always start it, keep an eye on it, and then when it starts getting low, just pause it and swap out the filament. If the color of the finished part doesn't matter because it's just a prototype that doesn't need to look pretty or you're gonna paint right over it, then this is a great way to use all the leftover filament that you have. I have three different techniques for this. The first is completely manual and it is the most high risk since it doesn't have any sort of electronic or mechanical backup. It all relies on me being able to pay attention and make sure I'm not gonna run out. The first thing I do is I loop some object onto the filament so I will hear it fall off when there isn't enough filament left to support it. I'll set a timer for a rough estimate for when I believe the filament will run out and then I'll sit over it and watch it when things start getting close. I prefer not to use this option if I can avoid it because it takes a lot of my attention away from whatever I'm trying to work on and instead it's only just focused on not running out of filament. I'm spending a lot of time listening, trying to hear the object, and I may even hear it and not realize what it is, or my timer may go off and I'm not in the room, or I just completely forget I need to check on the filament and it runs out and I've ruined the entire print. The second is a runout sensor. It's a lot more commonplace to find a runout sensor on a 3D printer, which just triggers a switch when the filament runs out and automatically pauses the print. With this one, I don't have to worry because I can just keep working and every so often I can glance over and see if it's still printing or not, or I can try and listen and see if I still hear it moving at all, which is a lot easier to detect when you're dealing with printers all day long. It's easier to see when one's moving or not moving versus just one random noise throughout the day. There are even some printers that utilize a second extruder so it will swap over to it when it detects the first one has run out. Printers like the CraftBot 3 IDEX or the CraftBot Flow IDEX or even the Ultimaker Material Handling Station. These all will pause from one extruder and move to the next when they detect a run out. The third and final method is the Mosaic Palette. Any of Mosaic's palette multi-extrusion systems like the original, the 2, the 2S, and all the Pros all feature multi-spool mode. So you can load four different filaments into it and it will feed your printer filament as the print progresses. Once it runs out of one of the inputs, it will cut it off and splice on the next strand of filament to allow the print to continue uninterrupted. Finding different things to do with materials that would otherwise be trash is actually one of my favorite things to do with these scraps. I like to print out little fills and leave them in my backpack so that whenever I strike up a conversation with someone interested in 3D printing, I can give them a couple. 
and doing this tends to alleviate some pack rat tendencies I have. So I hope this video helps you out with that too. These are the quick tips that I have, but if you have any other tips or tricks you'd like to let me know, be sure to leave those in the comments down below. Have fun with your scraps. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Hey there, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that quick tip on filament scraps and that this video has given you some ideas of what you can do with yours rather than throwing them away. If you want to read some in-depth articles, you can go to matterhackers.com or to stay up to date with all our digital manufacturing content, be sure to click subscribe. See you on the next one.